Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today we will discuss fossil fuel steam generators. Now fossil fuel is the fuel <coughs> which is made in millions of years when the vegetation is buried under the ground and in millions of years maybe 100 or 200 million years this vegetation is converted into the mineral oil or the coal or the natural gases and this source of energy is non-renewable for source of energy and the major drawback of this source of energy is that when the heat is liberated at the same time when we burn this fuel heat is liberated at the same time carbon dioxide is also liberated and which causes the global warming. However, in India more than 60 percent power generation is through the burning of fossil fuel. Now topics to be covered today are first of all we will do the classification of steam generations and then we will discuss the working of uh, a few of the uh, classical uh, steam boilers namely Lancashire boiler, Cornish boiler, Cochrane boiler and Babcox and Wilcox boiler. Now what is a boiler? The boiler is an enclosed pressure vessel where heat is generated through the combustion of fuel and this heat is used in conversion of water into the steam. So primarily the boiler is an enclosed vessel and the main purpose of the boiler is to generate steam, higher the pressure more work extraction from the steam. So boilers there is a tendency to have higher pressure in the boilers so that more work can be extracted from the heat of the steam. Uh, regarding the classification of the boilers there are several classification of the boilers but broadly they are classified amongst uh, fire tube boilers and the water tube boilers. In a fire tube boiler so in a boiler necessarily there is a shell and in this shell if we fill this shell with water at a certain level and through this shell there are number of maybe a single tube or maybe a number of tubes if they are passing through this shell and in these tubes the flue gases are flowing. Flue gases are the gases which are generated after burning the fuel and they are very at a very high temperature. So when these flue gases when they pass through the shell the heat exchange takes place between these gases and the water which is filled in the shell and steam is generated. So these type of boilers are known as fire tube boilers because there is a fire inside the tube. If fire is outside the tube contrary to this suppose in a shell the sh shell is filled with the flue gases, flue gases are entering from one side and leaving from another side. And there are number of tubes which are passing through the shell and in these tubes if the water is flowing then it becomes a uh, water tube boiler. So the fire tube boiler normally they have capacity less than 25 tons per hour pressure they are normally low pressure boilers. So boilers can be classified based on the pressure also. So the all the boilers which are having pressure less than 20 bar are known as uh, low pressure boilers right high pressure boilers then, then, then the question arises what are high pressure boilers. So high pressure boilers are those boilers where pressure is greater than 80 bar. So those boilers are high pressure boilers and between 20 to 80 they are intermediate pressure boilers. So fire tube boilers are normally uh, low pressure boilers the reason being when the shell is filled with the steam, steam is at a high pressure. So robust design of the shell has to be made. And for that uh, I mean it is not very cost effective the boiler also become heavy and there are safety related issues also. So normally high pressure boilers they are made uh, water tube boiler because once the water tube boiler is there the high pressure of fluid will be inside the tube only inside the number of tubes only and the shell will be filled with the uh, flue gases and, and the flue gases are at atmospheric pressure they are not at very high pressure or not at high pressure at all I mean they are at uh, atmospheric pressure. So, <coughs> so the normally the high pressure boilers are water tube boilers but the benefit of the uh, fire tube boiler is because there is a large pool of steam is there because a large pool of steam is there if there is a fluctuation in demand. So this demand can be met by these fire tube boiler. The water tube boiler is, is also possible but several controls are required right. Uh, now this is about a water tube boiler capacity it can go up to 120 tons per hour steam gen this is steam generation capacity 220 tons T O N tons per hour 
that is the steam generation capacity of the boiler. This is the range 4.5 to 120. Pressure it can go up to 200 bar, right? <laughs> controls, more controls are required because the water is flowing inside the tube. Suppose there is an obstruction in, in the flow of water, then accident may take place, right? So <coughs> if there are fluctuations in demand also, in that case also, in that case, we go for normally for this uh, fire tube boiler, but in these type of boilers, controls, more controls are required, more safety is required in uh, uh, water tube boiler and stringent water quality has to be maintained because the water is flowing inside the tube. In these boilers, water tube boilers, the water is flowing inside the tube. If any scaling takes place inside the tube or water is contaminated, it has mud support, for example, it will grossly hamper the heat transfer. So, for that reason, water quality has to be maintained in water tube boiler and they are of course, they are more efficient and steam generation is quick. And we have certain um, uh, water tube boiler, they are once through boiler, I mean water is entering from this side and we are getting steam from another side. So, there are no drums in those boilers. Position of furnace, that is another uh, way of classifying the boilers, whereas boiler is internally fired. Uh, it means the furnace is housed inside the boiler or it is outside the boiler. So, there can be a I mean number of uh, classification, position of principal axis, the boiler's boiler is horizontal, it means the principal axis is horizontal, boiler is vertical, principal axis is vertical. So, there can be a number of classification, but the main classification is fire tube boiler and water tube boiler, high pressure boiler and low pressure boiler. Now, depending upon the application, some boilers are mobile boilers like locomotive boilers, some are stationary boilers, circulation of water, how water is circulated in the boiler, it is a natural circulation or the force circulation. For the purpose of force circulation, pumps will be required. For natural circulation, no external energy will be required. So, this can be another uh, classification of the boilers. Now, we will start with Lancashire boiler. It is a very, I mean, popular and classical boiler. boiler. Okay, it was uh, introduced in the year 1844. Length of this boiler is between 7 to, 10 to 9 meters. It can go up to 10 meters also. There are no, I mean, um, strict dimension control uh, in this boiler. So, it can be 7 to 9 meters or 10 meters, diameter 2 to 3 meters, can be 4 meter also. So, there is a shell and shell has length of 10 meters or sorry, 7 to 9 meters. Diameter of the shell is 2 to 3 meters. So, there is a shell and it is a remember, it is a fire tube boiler. So, shell will be filled with the steam and the flue gases will be flowing inside the shell, in, in, inside the tube which is fixed inside the shell. So, there are two tubes in this boiler, there are two tubes and if we look at uh, the side view, I mean side view it is going to be like this, the side you will see only one tube. So, there is a burning place which is known as grate, this is firewall. Okay, and after burning the flue gases are moving in this direction. So, in both the tubes, the fuel is burning here and it is moving perpendicular to this board or in this direction. Now, is this shell is placed in a brick masonry. So, there is a brick masonry. And after going to the rear uh, at the last, it takes U-turn, it takes U-turn and uh, it travels from the bottom and comes into the front. So, it emerges from here. So, flue gases, flue gas or flue gases when they are moving in this direction, after reaching this end, they take U-turn. So, from, from, from suppose flue gases are moving in this direction, so they take U-turn and come to the front from the bottom side and so that heat transmission because this boiler is filled with water. So, heat transmission while moving in this direction, heat transmission takes place to the water and when after taking the U-turn, the bottom side is also heated, right and water is of course, the water is converted to the steam. At the fag end of this tube, it is slightly tapered, it is slightly tapered. The reason being 
when the flue gases are moving in this direction the temperature of flue gases comes down because heat is transmitted to the water when the temperature is reduced their velocity is also reduced so in order to maintain the velocity prop, uh, proper velocity the cross section area is reduced so that is why the, the the tubes are slightly there is a reduction a slight reduction in diameter at the fag end of the tubes after emerging from the fund still the flue gases have a lot of heat contained with them so after emerging from the front they are again sent to the sideway sideway now they are they move inside suppose i, I will draw a plan for uh, uh, this boiler suppose they are, now i am drawing the plan so when i am drawing the plan there i'll see two tubes right because side view is like this so when i see the plan i will see two tubes so the flue gases emerging from the front they will move sideway and will move in this direction right when they are moving this direction and coming here then there is a chimney and exit for the flue gases so there are three times they move across the length of the uh, along the length of the boiler first when the fuel is burned it the few uh, the flue gases move in this direction then they come from the bottom side come to the front and from to the side way uh, the diameter of these tubes ranges between 800 mm to 1000 mm uh, capacity of this boiler is approximately 9 tons of steam per hour so it can generate nine, it depends upon the size also but grossly it generates around 9 tons of steams per hour and pressure is less than 20 bar it is approximately 7.5 bar precisely uh, in uh, Lancashire boiler. So this is a photograph of a, uh, a used uh, Lancashire boiler here you can see the grate where the fuel is burned. Now the flue gases are through the along the axis of this tube now emerging from here because this entire this vessel is placed in the brick masonry I will show you the photograph okay this is brick masonry right so the entire boiler is placed in the brick masonry so after emerging from this side the flue gases travel from the bottom to the front and after coming to the front they travel sideway and then they leave from uh, the chimney there is a blow of cork which is used for uh, when the boiler is not in operation for draining out the water and sludge from the boiler so all these accessories will be uh, mountings and accessories will be discussing later on right now we will discuss on the uh, working of the boiler so after the concussion boiler we will discuss the cornish boiler so cornish boiler is smaller in size so here the length is varying between 4 to 7 meters, diameter of the drum is 1.25 to 1.75, so it is smaller in size and it has only one tube. That is the difference between Lancashire boiler and Cornish boiler and this tube is also eccentric, it is not centrally paced, placed, right. <laughs> Steam generation rate is 1.3 tons per hour, much less than the uh, steam generation uh, rate of uh, Lancashire boiler and pressure is 12 bar so it is smaller in size right and uh, uh, in this boiler uh, now regarding the movement of uh, uh, flue gases in this boiler also the flue gases uh, uh, suppose there is a tube inside flue gases they move in this direction first of all in Lancashire boiler they take u-turn come from the bottom in this case in the Cornish boiler first after reaching on rear end they are divided in two parts one part goes in this direction one part goes in this direction and first of all they heat up the side side of the vessel they come into the front they emerge in the front they emerge emerge in the front and from the front then the gases move in the bottom side so only direction of the flow i mean there is a change in the direction of flow in lancashire boiler along the axis then bottom and then emerging from the front and then going to the sides and leaving from the boiler house now in cornish boiler the flue gases move first of all they move the along the axis of the boiler then they are bifurcated they heat up sides of the boiler they combine in the front and in the front again they enter the bottom of the boiler and at last they leave from the boiler house 
this is the movement, ischemic movement of uh, the flue gases. This is the Fermi's tube. The flue gases are moving in this direction. Then they are bifurcating, coming to the front, and after reaching the front again, they are hitting the bottom and leaving the boiler house. Now this is the photographic view of uh, Cornish boiler. This is the signal tube which is being shown here. Right, it is uh, smaller in size. Steam generation rate is less. Pressure is also approximately 12 bar. Lancashire boiler has pressure approximately 17.5 bar. But both the boilers are fire tube boilers, and both the boilers are uh, low pressure boilers. After Cornish boiler, we will discuss the uh, Cochrane boiler. Uh, now, in this boiler, this is a vertical boiler. Previously, we have discussed the horizontal boilers. This boiler is different from the previous two. It is a vertical boiler, and uh, like axis is vertical. The boiler axis is vertical. It has a firebox where the burning of fuel takes place. This is firebox, and below the firebox there is a grate. This is the area where burning of fuel takes place. This boiler is also a fire tube boiler, and it has a dome at the top, like this. Uh, now, it has number of fire tubes. In Lancashire boiler or Cornish boiler, they had one or two fire tubes. This boiler has number of uh, fire tubes. So there are number of fire tubes. I will show only. Three or four fire tubes. Okay, one more. Okay. And the flue gases which are emerging from here, they will pass through these fire tubes. And there is a chimney. Here and gases emerging from here, they will pass through these fire tubes and they leave through the chimney. Shell is filled with water. Shell is filled with the water. So, when the heat transmission takes place from the flue gas to the water, uh, the steam is generated and the steam is collected in a dome. And dome has different mountings. Now, every boiler must have a mounting or should have number of mountings. Mountings are necessary to operate a boiler and for the safety of the boiler, safe operation of the boiler. So, a boiler must have two safety valves and a boiler ha must have a number of mountings. Those mountings I will be discussing later on. Right now, I will just uh, explain you the function of the boiler because when we need a steam, we need a valve to supply steam. There's, we need a steam stop valve. Right? Boiler, the water has to be fed to the boiler. So, there has to be a valve outside the boiler which can control the feed of the water to the boiler that is known as feed check valve. So, there and every boiler must have a manhole. It is mandatory because the manhole allows, I mean such a big boiler uh, allows the inspection and maintenance because re regular maintenance is required in a boiler, regular inspection of a boiler is required. So, a boiler must have manhole also so that a person can enter the boiler and do the inspection and necessary uh, maintenance work. So, here, uh, so the, it is filled with the water up to here, for example, and the steam is collected in the dome, and when the steam is required, it can be supplied through a valve to <coughs> for the useful purpose. Now, this is chimney. In some of the boiler, here door is provided. One can enter in the boiler through this door and do the inspection and, and uh, uh, maintenance work. <coughs> so, this is a firebox, here is the combustion chamber. And, and this is the complete uh, description of the boiler. Uh, I will show you the photograph of the boiler. This is the photograph of this boiler. right? Here you can see these tubes. They are water level indicators. Through the water level indicators, you can judge the level of water inside the boiler. The principle is simple. Suppose the boiler is filled up to here and we provide a transparent glass tube on this side connected at the top and the bottom. So, whatever the level of water is maintained here, what same level will be maintained in this tube also. And this tube is outside the boiler. So, we do not have to just make arrangement for seeing inside the boiler. It is not possible in high pressure boilers. So, just simply just looking at the level of the water in the tube, we get idea about the level of water in the boiler. Right? And uh, here you can see 
uh, in this there are certain mountings right on the boiler for the uh, operation of the boiler this is schematic of the boiler which I already which I have already explained you here there is a manhole manhole is here where a person can enter and do the inspection and maintenance work. So, after this uh, uh, Cornish boiler sorry Cochrane boiler the efficiency of this boiler is are approximately 70 percent it is not very highly efficient boiler. The next boiler is <laughs> we will discuss is the Babcox and Wilcox boiler. So, it is the largest boiler it produce I mean capacity of this boiler is 20 to 40 tons per hour and pressure also can vary between 11.5 to 17.5 17 bar and this is a uh, water tube boiler it is not a fire tube boiler. So, there is a bank of tubes uh, in this boiler and the tubes are inclined at a certain angle uh, there is a bank of tubes right and tubes are inclined uh, at a certain angle of uh, 10 to 15 degree and there is a header here header means flow of all the tubes will be accumulated in header ok. So, or we can say these tubes are connected in parallel right. So, <laughs> parallel connection there has to be a header where all the flow uh, flow coming water flowing in all the tubes is accumulated here and subsequently it is transported to a drum there is a drum right. So, water entering from this side it is now this area is filled this is the boiler house suppose this is boiler house it is filled with the flue gases right water entering from here right water entering from here it is moving in, in the tube which is inclined at uh, 10 to 15 degree and then leaving at the top right and again it is coming from here to this. So, there is a closed loop now fuel is burned somewhere here right there is a fire door to feed the uh, fuel in the uh, furnace and it has baffles the function of the baffles is to deflect the the flue gases. So, that they spend maximum time in the boiler and it also improves the heat transmission from flue gases to the water flowing inside the tubes right. <coughs> now, after this circulation the water is accumulated in the drum and there is a stratification between uh, uh, steam and the water right. Now, this boiler has provision of getting superheated steam also. So, superheating of steam can also be done in Babcox and Wilcox boiler. So, for the purpose of superheating there is a anti priming pipe here which separates water from steam and this anti priming pipe the steam trailing through the anti priming pipe again there is a superheater and this superheater is connected to main stop valve this is main stop valve here. Now, how is the superheating is done suppose this boiler shell has a stratification and upper half will is filled with the saturated steam. The saturated steam may have quality 1, it may have quality 0 0.7, 0 0.8 or 0 0.4 whatever quality <laughs> it can have, it can have an, an, any quality. So, normally it is 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. Now, this steam, this steam, now this provision for superheating in the boiler is done to supply superheated steam for the purpose of uh, maybe for the purpose of uh, power generation. Now, this saturated steam it is not necessary that the steam is dry it is quality may be less than 1 right. So, this steam is again passed through this area where flue gases are there. So, when the more heat is added the steam becomes superheated and now, now this main stop wall we get superheated steam. Now, it has number it is a huge boiler. So, it has number of doors for inspection purpose and uh, pressure gauges and mountings are provided on the shell for, for the purpose of monitoring and, and operation of the boiler. Uh, this is uh, the schematic of the boiler you can see these tubes are inclined they are inclined at, at a degree 10 to 15 degree and uh, there is a superheater which is taking steam from here 
and steam is circulated in the superheater and this steam after uh, coming from here it goes to the so it is a uh, very big boiler and uh, baffle plates the main main uh, uh, attraction of this boiler is it can uh, maintain temperature pressure between 11.5 to 75 bar 17.5 bar and it can supply super steam and the steam generation rate is quite high 20 to 40 tons per hour so in a nutshell i have explained you these uh, four uh, classical boilers that is all for today in the next class we will take up the high pressure boilers thank you